Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. Over the past few weeks, I've been demonstrating how to do different types of composites in Photoshop. Now, a composite is when you take another image, usually part of that image, and you put it into a different image. For example, I have this image here, and a composite would be maybe taking a seagull from a different image and putting that seagull in this image. In this video, I'm going to show you three different ways you could achieve this. Each have advantages and disadvantages, and we're going to talk about each. Now, on my desktop, I do have an image of a seagull. And although you can't see it here in this preview app, uh, it is actually clipped out from the background. So everything around the seagull is blank pixels. And this, of course, makes it super easy to do. So we're going to go to our Photoshop app, and I have this image opened up to it. And I'm going to show you first the most common way, the way most of us do it. The disadvantage of this way, it takes the longest compared to the other two ways. And for some people, it doesn't work the way I'll show you to begin with, and they have to use keyboard shortcuts. Now, to do this method, you go to File, and you just open the image of the seagull. So we got the seagull and we click on it, click open. Now it's going to open it in another tab. So we have two tabs up here, the original image, the seagull image. To put it in the other image, you simply have to get the move tool. The keyboard shortcut for the move tool is the V key. It's the top left hand tool over here. Just click on the seagull, hold it with the left mouse button and drag it up to the tab that contains the image we want to drop it on and simply go over the image and let go of the left mouse button and you dropped it on there. And you could resize it. You could hit the command or control T keys on your keyboard you get these handles and you could resize it so that's still very easy but as i mentioned it probably takes the longest and for some people let me toss this out for some people that click and drag method just doesn't work their machine won't let them click on the seagull drag it up there drop it on they just can't do it so they have to use a keyboard shortcut which makes it even more cumbersome they have to select everything using the keyboard shortcut command or control A. All right, so they selected everything. They have to copy that to the clipboard, hitting command or control C. And when I say command or control, command for a Mac, control for a PC. Now we have it copied to the clipboard. Now we go up to the original image and we hit command or control V to paste it. Again, you get it command or control T to resize it and you're good to go. Still not super difficult, but maybe not as easy as the next method I'll show you. Now the next method is you don't even have to open the image up into Photoshop like I did here. I'll even close it down. All you need to do is have it somewhere on your system so you know where it is. I have it on my desktop. Go up to File and then down to Place Embedded. And when you do that, just go on the image you want to add and click Place and it will add it. Now it adds it real big, but it has those handles and you could resize it. Click on it, move it around. Do whatever you need to do when you're happy with it. Just click the check mark. Now I left it relatively large on purpose because you may have noticed when I opened up that file menu, right below place embedded was place linked. They do pretty much the same thing, but they are different and the, different, the difference is significant. Um, let's stay with the original place embedded image and let me show you something. I'm going to minimize this. We're going to go to our seagull over here and on our seagull image in my preview app, my image preview app, I'm going to go to tools. This has nothing to do with Photoshop, right? I'm just going to flip it horizontal. It's now facing to the left, right? I'll go to flip horizontal. It's now facing to the right. And I'll get rid of that. I'll even close down the preview app. We go back to Photoshop. It's still facing the original way. Nothing has changed. That's where place linked is different. Let me throw this one facing to the left out. All right, so we're going to start over. We'll go up to File, and this time we'll do Place Linked. And remember, I switched the image, so it's now facing to the right. So we'll click on it, Place. There it is, facing to the right. I'm going to leave it nice and big. So it's facing to the right. I'm going to minimize Photoshop. I'm going to go back to the Seagull image, open it back up into my Image Preview app. I'm going to go up to Tools. I'm going to go up to Flip Horizontal. Now it's facing to my left. I'll close this down. We'll go back to Photoshop. Now you'll see it flipped. So any changes you do when you use place link to that original file, those changes will be uh, um, shown in Photoshop. So Photoshop will reflect those changes. 
If you use Place Embedded, you're just taking that image and putting it as is in Photoshop. And any changes you do going forward on the original image won't be reflected in Photoshop. So these ways are faster than that first way I showed you, and they each have advantages or disadvantages. If you place an image using Place Links, when you save this as a PSD file, it will be smaller in size than it will be if you use Placed Embedded. Placed Embedded will be a larger file. But if you take that link file, let's say you close Photoshop down, and then you take that link file of the seagull and you delete it or move it to a different folder, when you open the file back up, the original background, you know, this, this lighthouse image back up into Photoshop, it's not going to be able to find the seagull and it's going to prompt you to link it, to find it. So that's the disadvantages of using place linked. Um, you really have to kind of preserve that file, but you may place it in there and it may not look quite right and you want to re-edit it in another editing program. And if you use place linked, it will automatically reflect those edits you do to it in Photoshop. So that's an advantage of using place link. So two different or three different methods for dropping something onto an image, doing a composite. Um, sometimes you use them all, you know, you know, one method might work better than another in some instances. Most often when I'm working, you know, on my own and I'm in a hurry, I just use place embedded. That just is the fastest way uh, to do it. And again, you could always resize anything. Just make sure you clicked on that layer, hit command or control T, you'll get those handles and you could move things around and um, like, you know, and resize it or do whatever you need to do uh, to make it work. One other note, when you use place linked or place embedded, it comes on as a layer as a smart object. Smart objects are a little larger when you save the image as a regular layer. A smart layer is a little, make the entire save will be a little larger. But it allows you the, uh, the advantage of if you use a filter, if you go up to filter and use a filter on it, you'll be able to go back in and re-edit it. That's the advantage of using a smart object or smart layer as it's often called. So that's it. Hopefully that helps you better utilize Photoshop, um, these tools in Photoshop when doing a composite. Thank you everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.